Hi, welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to discuss about the DNS, how it works within the Kubernetes and uh, how basically the services and ports inside the Kubernetes basically interacts. So DNS plays a very crucial role in case of Kubernetes uh, uh, where, where you are running the multiple services and uh, behind those services there are the multiple ports. So ports which you are running, uh, those ports can be identified on the basis of labels and the uh, labels which are matching those ports are going to be enrolled with the service automatically. So when you create a service, you have three ways through which you can access the service that is using the cluster IP or node port or load balancer. Now, if the services, let's say they are within the Kubernetes cluster only and they have to interact with each other. So you need to make a request from one service to another service. And this is where uh, the you can use the cluster IP. But if you are going to use the cluster IP, there is a significant issue that every time we are going to deploy the service, we will actually have to log into the Kubernetes cluster, identify the cluster IP, and uh, then we have to specify that. So uh, if we have to deploy multiple uh, services together and we want to make it automated, then this way of identifying the cluster IP after deploying the service within the Kubernetes cluster is not going to work out. So in for these cases, what Kubernetes has done is they have actually allowed you to associate the DNS names instead of the IP address. Uh, another use case comes from the fact that suppose if uh, you are going to modify or update the service, then the name associated, uh, the IP associated with that service can change. But at the same time, the if you are creating the service with the same name the dns names uh, will not be changing so uh, you don't have to uh, you know map it to the ip because that way the you cannot migrate it to some other kubernetes cluster and expect all the uh, resources to work okay so uh, kubernetes dns basically schedules uh, DNS uh, pod and uh, or a service in the cluster and we are going to configure uh, it uh, whenever this happens it basically the uh, it configures the kubelet to tell that the individual containers to use the DNS server IPs to resolve the DNS names. So every service uh, which is defined in the cluster including the DNS server itself is assigned a DNS name and uh, the client pod okay it's going to list down all the uh, pods within the own namespace and uh, within the cluster uh, default domain so uh, uh, let's talk about the namespace of the services so if you run a dns query you may get a different result based on the namespace itself uh, of the pod making it so dns queries uh, that don't specify a namespace are limited to the pods namespace itself. What this means is that if I'm not specifying the name while making a query, so eventually by default, it's going to uh, search the query with the, within the same namespace and that if it's not able to find that service, it's not going to, uh, uh, going to return any result. What this means is Suppose you are working inside a test namespace and uh, you are trying to access a data service inside a prod. So suppose now from the, uh, I make a request from my test namespace and I just specify a query to return the, uh, to return data service, okay? In this particular case, I didn't specify any namespace like that of a prod so what will happen is that it will not re return any results because the data service itself is running in a prod namespace now if you make a query which says 
data dot prod then you are actually appending the namespace uh, in the service so it's going to now return the result because it's able to identify the namespace in which the service is running now dns queries which we are which are running inside the kubernetes uh, uh, using the pods uh, you can use the pods etc resolve.conf okay uh, that way uh, you can uh, make it work as well and kubernetes sets this file basically for each pod for example uh, if you run a query uh, say data which may be expanded to data dot test dot service dot cluster dot local this is what it eventually expands to now you can mention data dot uh, test or data dot prod and uh, kubernetes will automatically take the service dot cluster dot local you don't have to specify that and when you run a search option on this uh, query so what will happen is it will uh, <coughs> eventually going to uh, look under the name server it will uh, put the you will you are going to put the namespace followed by the service dot cluster dot local this is how it works so uh, if we take a look uh, in summary a pod in the te test namespace can uh, successfully be resolved either through data.prod or you can mention data.prod.service svc.cluster.local so that is how the uh, dns is created for each service that you are going to create inside the kubernetes now what all objects are going to get this DNS records? So basically there are two objects uh, we are discussing majorly. Here are the services and pods. So both the services, any service that you are going to create inside the Kubernetes, it's automatically going to associate the DNS name with it, uh, followed uh, on the basis of uh, service uh, dot namespace dot svc dot cluster dot local. So, and uh, same thing happens with the uh, uh, with the pods as well okay so uh, there are basically different types of records uh, which uh, uh, which are associated with the services uh, like a record uh, four times a record srv records so these are the records which we will be discussing in our next video. Also, uh, you will find that there is a headless service. Uh, we are going to talk this about R in our new video. Now, uh, there is also something like a Kubernetes DNS based service discovery. So we are also going to discuss uh, about this in our for the uh, video so all of this becomes necessary when you are going to deploy the multiple services in such a way that you are going to copy the yaml and easily migrate them over okay so understanding these concepts become very essential uh, for running the kubernetes cluster all right that's all for this session uh, uh, we are going to continue on this in our uh, next videos if you haven't gone through this if you haven't subscribed our channel yet, I would suggest you to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.